hey girl hey i got a mom bob from love me hair and i did a no baby hair install what i know who is she it's giving mom bob but not regular mom cool mom you know what i mean you know what I mean. It's giving real simple, clean girl, put up cool mom. I didn't have to cut this bob at all. It came like this. So you see it's cute. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Love Me Hair provided me with this wig and sponsored my video today. Here I am. I know you was dying. Couldn't go four seconds without seeing my face. But I love my makeup today. I must have felt like working. Okay, so I bleached the knots, washed, plucked the hairline, and flat ironed this wig all off camera. I'll link videos in the top right where I've done all those steps before. This is a 10 inch side part wig. I forgot to show y'all how the inside is made and I don't want nobody to be shocked when you order one. So I included a picture off of Love Me's website so y'all can see how it's constructed. I feel like it was made to be installed very easily, probably like by a beginner or by anyone, I guess my first step is always cleaning my skin really well with either alcohol or witch hazel i posted a video where i showed y'all how not cleaning your skin can negatively affect your install and i'm not doing no dumb stuff like that again no half stepping if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it big i dot glue along half of my ball cap and I even out the glue with the end of my rat tail comb until this first layer is as thin as possible. Then I do the same thing to the other half of my forehead. Once both sides of my forehead were coated with the first layer of glue, I added a second layer. Because I break laying my glue down into sections, the glue on the first half of my forehead is mostly clear now, so I can go straight into applying my second layer. Once I'm done like blending out the glue here, I go ahead and I do the same thing to the other side, and that other side is going to be mostly clear by then. Now I'm ready to lay her down. I put the lace against my skin to see if I wanted to add makeup to it or not. The lace looked brown, not really white, so I decided to add the excess makeup that was already on my foundation brush to the perimeter of the hairline on the inside of the lace. I'll see if it needs more help once it's on my head. I put the wig on and I made sure it's centered. Then I aligned the hairline to the edges of the shiny parts on my skin. That's where the glue is and that's where I need the hairline to begin on my head. I always start in the middle and then I work my way to my temples and then to my sideburns. I use my fingertips to press the lace into the glue and if I notice that the hairline of the wig is too far back, I readjust it, lining it up to the glue or even a little past the glue before I press it in. And then I do the same thing to the other side. At this point, I was like, okay, I'm feeling it. I look on the cover. I kind of look like a spy. To help the lace melt into the glue, I tied it down and I blow dried it for 10 minutes. I took the band off and I just combed through the hairline a little bit. Girl, this hairline looks so good. I wish I could do like an updated plucking tutorial for y'all, but I already have two plucking tutorials and they're really good. And I don't do nothing new, so it won't be a new plug-in tutorial anytime soon because I'm not doing nothing different. I cut any lace off that is not stuck to glue. I bring my glue out as far as I desire my wig to be so if there is no glue on a certain area of my skin that is intentional and I don't need any lace to be there. As I'm cutting in a zigzag pattern I always touch my skin to see if it's sticky because if it's sticky that means that I intended lace to be here and if I cut it off now my skin will just have exposed glue residue on it and that is annoying to clean especially when you have a fresh install so I take my time and I cut slow to make sure I'm not cutting too much lace the lace is not melted all the way yet so sometimes as I cut I will accidentally lift some lace that is supposed to be glued down and if I'm moving too fast not checking to see if it's sticky under this area I cut it off and now I can't get it back and now my install won't look as clean if I have glue residue showing on my skin. It'll look gooey and it just don't look good. So 
I hope that makes sense. I noticed that these edges of lace aren't laying down and my skin underneath is not sticky, which means that I don't want my wig this far out anyway. So I cut all these pieces off. No need to apply extra glue and I don't have no unnecessary mess on my skin. But once I'm done with this, of course I do the same thing to the inside. I mean inside, other side. Just like I did to the other side, I'm brushing my hairline back. I'm seeing what's not sticking. And once I see it's not sticking, I'm touching under it. If it's not sticky under it, I know that I could cut off this extra lace. No need to apply more glue. I mean, you can, but I'm not doing that. This is why I take my time with myself because of neatness. I'm not easily pleased. I like things how I like them or else I'm unsatisfied. So I'm going to forever take my time and put effort into myself and in what I do. And I think you should too. I parted out my side part and I used a wax stick and a hot comb to flatten out and mold the top of my head and hairline. I plucked the wig off camera before I installed it, but I wanted certain areas to be a little bit more thinned out than what it was. So I did a little bit more plucking. This wig was still not melted yet. I be like melting it twice with the glue and then I go over it again with the spray. I'll do that in a little bit. But even if it was melted all the way, I would still use my finger to hold down the perimeters of the hairline as I pluck to make sure I don't accidentally lift anything because I would be too mad. To give my wig a more realistic look, I add some makeup that's a little lighter than me to the part and then I melt the wig down for the second time. This will help make the wig like feel like it's on on, like it's not going nowhere. It also helps the white cast like along my forehead disappear, making the wig look more natural and helps the install last longer overall. Then I tie it down and blow dry it again for another 10 minutes. I come alive after I melt my wig down for the second time. It just be looking too good. But girl, I hopped on FaceTime with my friend. Because I was concerned on if I look like the president. I did not want to look like the president. I was like, do I like this? Like, am I going to have to cry because I got to post this? But I was like, actually, I like it. I look cool. I look edgy. I look like a cool mom. I'm, I'm about to take my kids, you know, to soccer practice. Hopping out of a lamb truck with some bad kids. I'm completely unconcerned with their behavior. While they're in school, I'm at the mall. I'm shopping. My husband is somewhere making money. Completely unbothered and unconcerned with how much of his money I'm spending on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, that's what this hair is giving to me. That's the storyline this hair is selling for me. And I was 100% for it. I love wearing this bob. A little bit messy and tousled like bed hair. I look like the friend that says, hey, you want to go to Italy on a regular Wednesday evening? I give to my friends diamonds and stocks. Not Bath & Body Works Japanese Cherry Blossom Lotion. I just look rich. And that's funny because this wig is very affordable on Love Me's website. Betty on a budget. <laughs> but this Betty ain't got no budget. This wig just gives so much vibes i look like i make charcuterie boards and invite my friends over to watch the bachelor i need some more storylines in the comments i gotta go thank you for watching though bye